уверены, я русский военный корабль. Предлагаю сложить оружие и сдать военный корабль. After the Russian military managed to control the waters of the Black Sea region by Ukraine, the world immediately responded with cutthroat sanctions on Russia that crippled its economy on one hand, but on the other hand, it has resulted in skyrocketing oil and gas prices worldwide. However, while imposing sanctions on the Russian citizens, the leaders of the world failed to realize about a massive food crisis which is slowly approaching their doorstep. If you look at the Black Sea and Kerch Strait, it is considered as the only sea route for Russia and Ukraine that helps them connect with the Mediterranean Sea and with the rest of the world. As Russia now controls the east and west side of the Kerch Strait, it allows them to take control of Ukrainian ships that try to ship anything to the rest of the world. Now, here comes the worst part. Being the major producer of grains, Russia and Ukraine alone are responsible for around 30% of the global wheat exports. In 2021, Ukraine accounted for 15% of the hard wheat supplies, also called pasta, worldwide. And almost 50 countries depend on Russia and Ukraine for at least 30% of their wheat imports, and 26 of them depend on more than 50% of their imports in the country. This was just a tip of the iceberg because more concerning data and evidence-based consequences of upcoming food crises in the world will be covered in this video. So stay with me to the end because we will also be talking about how the U.S. consumers will be affected by the crisis and why the largest manufacturer of fertilizers in our country is failing to deliver essential fertilizers to our hard-working farmers. Every plant or crop needs nutrients to create food for us like rice, corn, and many other essentials. Such nutrients are absorbed by the plant's root system when the soil is healthy. So in order to maintain a healthy soil, it needs the support of fertilizers that consist of major nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus, potassium, and much more. However, being known as the world's highest exporter of fertilizer, the heavy sanctions imposed on Russia has now directly impacted the supply of fertilizers worldwide, thus increasing the price of fertilizer like never seen before. This painful rise in fertilizer prices is now forcing farmers to either grow less food or give up farming entirely. The total farming area around the world has fallen 0.2% since August last year. In 2021, the United States alone imported $1.28 billion of fertilizers from Russia. In the same year, Russia and Belarus accounted for more than 40% of potassium exports worldwide, which is one of the key nutrients that is needed to boost the production of crops. Another important point that needs to be made is that Russia is also responsible for the supply of other key nutrients of fertilizers. For example, 22% of ammonia, 14% of urea, and 14% of monoammonium phosphate were all supplied by Russia. As Ukraine finds itself fighting against the mighty Russian army, they understandably want to ensure food supply remains stable in their country. And because of that, they have now completely banned the export of wheat, sunflower oil, and corn to other countries. Now, even if they decided to export food supplies to ease the supply levels around the world, Russian naval ships will be strategically positioned to attack their supply ships in the Kerch Strait. The haunting effects of the upcoming food crisis are already being felt in countries like Brazil, Zimbabwe, Kenya, India, and Thailand. In Brazil, around 19% of the entire country's crop nutrients come from ships approaching Russia and Belarus. Despite being known as the biggest exporter of soybean, Brazilian farmers in the western central state of Mato Grasso have already reduced their use of fertilizers in corn crops and are also planning to do the same with soybean crops at the end of this year, thus moving on the path towards reducing the production level by 8%. According to a farmer named Giacomelli, fertilizers is hard to get. Some dealers won't finalize a deal until cargo ships arrive at the coast of Brazil. When lawmakers from Brazilian farm states try to look for potassium extraction from their own lands, they have come up against heavy opposition from the local Muro tribe in the region who know that mining will destroy the land they have depended on for many generations. Farmers of Zimbabwe are now planning to use cow dung or chicken waste 
to grow their corn crops instead of using fertilizers after noticing a steep rise in its prices. The same situation is being faced by Kenyan farmers who have also reduced their use of commercial fertilizers and are now utilizing manure or other animal waste to grow coffee and avocados. So let's discuss what's happening in Thailand, which is known for its unique rice quality. They are now facing pressure from the government on whether they should stop importing from Russia or not. According to the president of the Thai Fertilizer and Agricultural Supply Association, Russia and Belarus were responsible for providing around 12% of the fertilizer imports last year. As the prices of fertilizers are rising, they're constantly looking for ways to substitute fertilizer as soon as possible. I also want to tell you about a Canadian farmer who grows corn and canola and has recently spent a massive $500,000 Canadian to buy 80% of fertilizers he will need to 2023. He believes things will only get worse in the months and years ahead. Maximo Torero, chief economist for the UN Food and Agricultural Organization said, if we don't resolve the problem of fertilizer, trade of fertilizer doesn't continue, then we have a very serious problem of food supply next year. Okay, what he is saying is extremely important. So let me clarify his point. The food production in every part of the world is very sensitive to transportation interruptions due to specific planting times of foods based on the seasons and the just-in-time delivery strategies that have been adopted in modern times. If the needs of farmers cannot be met and in turn causing crops not to be planted, a shocking rise in food prices is guaranteed to occur and millions of people in poor countries will be devastated as they are left without food. So this brings us to our next point. What is happening with farmers in America and how will this impact the food supply here at home? So very recently, Union Pacific Railway Company, whose routes cover around 23 states of America, informed CF Industries about delays in their nitrogen fertilizer shipment without notice. Union Pacific told CF they will be reducing their shipments by 20%. CF Industries is considered as the leading manufacturer of nitrogen and hydrogen products that helps farmers increase the amount of food production for the country. Union Pacific Railway spokeswoman Kristen Self said, the delay is caused because they are addressing problems in the supply chain that are heavily affecting the railway shipments. The railway connects with key agricultural states like Iowa, Illinois, Kansas, Nebraska, Texas, and California. The news immediately sparked outrage in the entire country because it's occurring right in the middle of growing season. This untimely supply of nitrogen and hydrogen to the farmers will guarantee low food production, thus amounting to higher food prices at a level that has never been seen before. And this reduced shipment problem is happening while fertilizer prices are already increasing due to the war. Farmers are already witnessing a massive 300% increase in their costs to produce crops. And the reason they give us is the rise in price of fertilizers, seed, and fuel. And fuel being an integral part of operating agricultural machinery. A farm owner named Rick Sudam said last year he spent $17,000 to fertilize his 300-acre farm. And this year, he's forced to spend $34,000, which will only cover half of his farm. Furthermore, the United Nations agency reported that food inflation has hit 20% and is soon approaching 50% in the coming months. A haunting prediction of a wheat apocalypse was made by a website called strangesounds.org. It said a limited supply of soft white wheat resulted in a six-year low from wheat exports from the United States. This fact was also confirmed by the United States Department of Agriculture in their wheat report submitted in February. However, all of these compounding effects on the consumer's budget could have been avoided if the Biden administration had made better decisions. For example, they could have normalized the oil prices by generating enough fossil fuel from our own land. But this is not possible because the Biden administration canceled the Keystone XL pipeline project. Furthermore, supply of fertilizers could have been handled if the administration had sufficient backup plans. Nevertheless, it has become obvious that the administration loves blaming Russia for all its mistakes. Recently, when a reporter asked White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki about the ongoing food crisis, she proudly said, well, that is a direct result of the invasion of Ukraine. 
And also, there was anticipation that gas prices had risen prior to Russia's invasion of Ukraine because the markets had anticipated it. A lot of it boils down to the Biden administration, which could soon face the wrath of patriots on a massive scale if they take no sufficient action. The experts have already made some chilling predictions. Catherine Bertini, a former executive director of the World Food Program, said, People will react when they are hungry, when the cost of food goes so high that they can't afford to pay rent. The World Food Program recently shocked everyone by stating that around 283 million people in 81 countries are currently facing acute food insecurity, and around 45 million are at the edge of famine. Furthermore, Senator Chris Kuhn recently suggested that President Biden send troops to Ukraine to ensure sufficient support to them in the war. More support to Ukraine by the United States means forcing Russia to prolong the war, thus affecting the supply chain of essential food supplies and increasing the duration of the food crisis. Then we have to deal with the greedy corporations that will try to take advantage of the crisis to increase their profits at the cost of keeping people hungry. The U.S. Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack said, I sincerely hope that no company out there, whether it is fertilizer or any other supply that this may impact, will take unfair advantage of the circumstances of the situation, making sure that they don't use this situation as an excuse for doing something which isn't necessarily justified by supply and demand. Please, my friends, be prepared. The writing is already on the walls, and I wanted to make sure you had enough time to prepare. But in my humble opinion, I think you should prepare with compassion in your heart. Buy extra supplies with the intent to help your extended family and your neighbors. The potential hardship that lies in the future is an opportunity for us to come together and to help one another. Resist the urge to be selfish and let's use this hardship to become selfless. You know what they say, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And that's it for today, my friends. Don't forget to like and share, and most importantly, join our member site and support the mission to deliver truthful information. I'd rather depend on the generosity of you, people I can trust, than ever be dependent on YouTube again. I'd like to thank you all for spending this time with me, and I'll see you next time.